Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with Miles Logan, a jewel thief, preparing to carry out a $17 million diamond robbery in Los Angeles. Miles' collaborators include his right hand and best friend, Eddie, his getaway driver, and the newly acquired members of the team, Tully and Deacon. Eddie and Miles enter the building via the airflow, while Deacon hacks into the CCTV feed from the roof, and assists them in navigating, while keeping the guards at bay. Meanwhile, Tully waits for the escape vehicle's crew. Eddie returns to the roof and joins Deacon for the next stage of their plan, after assisting Miles in gaining access to the safe. To his surprise, the new recruit confesses his genuine goals. Deacon declares that he doesn't want to split the money, and after proclaiming this, he kills Eddie, shooting him off the tall building. Unfortunately, Eddie falls onto a police cruiser, which raises the alarm during construction and throughout the town, causing Tully to flee. Miles returns to the building and manages to elude the guards, in order to reach Deacon on the roof. However, the hungry recruit points a gun at him, and demands the diamond. As the heated argument continues, a police helicopter approaches, forcing Deacon to rope tread his way out to an underground production building. Miles tries to follow the escape route, but Deacon stops him halfway through, and demands the diamond again, threatening to shoot him. Miles abruptly cuts the rope in the center, and swings crashes his way into the building. While Deacon flees, he hides the diamond inside the ducts of the below-ground construction building, as the cops arrive. Miles is quickly apprehended and hauled downstairs. To his surprise, he discovers the body of his beloved comrade Eddie while being transported within the police vehicle. Regardless, he makes it his mission to recover the gem, at whatever cost. He is freed from prison after two years. As expected, he is overjoyed to regain his freedom, and begins shouting in the streets. Then he takes a cab straight to his girlfriend's house, intending to spend some romantic time with her. Janice, on the other hand, breaks up with him, because of his deception about being a felon. Miles, heartbroken, begs her to stay with him, but she refuses to listen. Now, his only goal is to retrieve the diamond he lost. Unfortunately, Miles is stunned in amazement, when he discovers that the building beneath which he had concealed the diamond, is now an LAPD police station. Regardless, he is adamant about retrieving the valuable jewel. To carry out his plan, Miles enters the building, and discovers that the diamond is concealed inside the ducts, of what is now the Homicide Detective Bureau, which requires a key card to enter. Later, he investigates the safety precautions, and returns disguised as a pizza delivery man. He requests access to the murder branch, but as expected, law enforcement personnel refuse. Miles is left without a desire, so he pretends to start a conversation with homicide investigator Carlson, and grabs his access card. Miles later takes the card to his shady uncle, Lou, and asks him to fabricate a new one for him. Uncle Lou is initially hesitant, arguing that the job is dangerous. Nevertheless, once Miles offers him large quantities of money, he agrees. His uncle forges not only a bogus card, but also a badge and some documentation, proving Miles is a freshly transferred police investigator named Malone. Under this guise, he travels to the police station, to get the diamond. After gaining admission to the murder branch with his forged card, Miles rushes to the female restroom, to gain access to the ducks. However, while he is doing so, a prisoner inside the structure subdues a police officer, and attempts to escape through the same duct. Miles tries to conceal himself, but accidentally knocks the prisoner down. The noise draws people's attention, and soon the entire department is in the restroom. Miles is forced to announce himself as Detective Malone, and explain how he prevented the criminal from escaping, impressing everyone with his bravery and quick thinking. Unfortunately, the station head, Rizzo, also hears of his bravery, and decides to put his abilities to the test. He summons Miles to his office, and delegates on the ground responsibilities to freshly promoted Detective Carlson. Concerned, Miles requests that he be given desk responsibilities, but Rizzo believes that bold officials like him belong on the streets. Carlson receives a burglary alarm next, and rushes to the area with a reluctant Miles. On the way, he brags about Miles' incredible work as a detective. Uncle Lou, it turns out, embellished Miles' record, which includes 16 citations, the seizure of 128 criminals, six of whom were terrorists, seven bomb defusals, and even preventing an airliner from being hijacked. Carlson claims that he drives unusually slowly, implying that he is highly worried and new to his life as a detective. They soon arrive at their destination, which appears to be an auto parts store. The owner greets them and begins to complain, a criminal stealing three dozen automotive tire rims from his warehouse. The warehouse alarm went off, but it took the cops an hour to arrive, allowing the thief to flee. Miles, who has been mute throughout, 
discovers some extremely weird numbers. Given that he is a professional thief, he is aware of how they operate, and begins assessing the crime scene. Soon, he deduces that the thief would need more than an hour to break into the warehouse, load three dozen heavy rims onto a truck and depart. He believes the owner is lying, and when inspecting a nearby parked truck, he discovers all of the stolen electronics. The owner admits to carrying out the ruse for insurance money. Carlson clearly asks Miles' motivation for allowing the proprietor to pass, and he replies that every now and then, you have to allow the small fish to visit and trap the larger fish. On their trip back to the station, he takes the wheel, and instructs Carlson how to ride like a true detective, which includes overspeeding, and nearly colliding with other vehicles, much like a runaway criminal. He eventually stops at a shop for a few packs of gum, but he soon finds himself in a bad situation. An armed robber storms into the establishment, and demands that the cash register be opened. To his surprise, the robber turns out to be none other than his ex-companion Thule. They're knocked down to look at each other, and Carlson storms inside the store, as they recover from the shock. To keep his cover, Miles let Thule escape through the back door. Carlson, on the other hand, calls for help, and they eventually nick him on the road. Thule refuses to give up, and Detective Hardcastle suggests requesting a SWAT unit. To keep his secret hidden and his comrade from being killed, Miles disarms himself, and walks as far as Thule to encourage him to surrender. While the latter refuses, Miles offers him $20,000 and a day in prison in exchange for his freedom. Thule eventually agrees, and Miles elegantly pretends to arrest him. Later, Carlson tells everyone in the department about Miles valiantly subduing a dangerous crook with his bare hands. Miles' knowledge of crooks and skill to thwart crimes make him quite popular among his friends as the days pass. At a point, Lt. Rizzo summons him to his office, and informs him that the burglary division has been looking for a new leader, and he believes Miles is the appropriate person for the job. Miles grudgingly accepts the location, not wanting to betray his secret. The next day, he makes another attempt to locate the diamond, but when he arrives at the right location, it has disappeared. Later, he learns from investigator Hardcastle, one of the hot water pipes burst some time ago, flooding all the vents, and forcing the department to flush out the entire apparatus. However, the treacherous deacon learns of Miles' freedom, and appears in the neighborhood of Uncle Lou. The vintage guy denies knowing anything about Miles' whereabouts, but an enraged deacon shoves him towards a desk, and searches through his files. He ultimately discloses the truth about Miles' new identity there. When Thule is taken to the police station, and forced to spend more than an afternoon in jail, he threatens to expose Miles, but ends up getting terribly crushed. Next, Miles pursues the diamond with the assistance of a distant management car. He eventually finds it within the air duct, directly over Rizzo's office. Later, Carlson notices Miles snooping into the ducts, and inquires as to what is going on. He also claims to have looked up his name and badge number in the police database, but was unable to find someone named Malone. Concerned about being discovered, Miles lies to Carlson, claiming to be from internal affairs, and to be here on an undercover mission. Carlson, somewhat unusually, buys his falsehoods and swears to keep them hidden. Miles looks for a way into an adjoining room, which is the fairly secured evidence room, with little to no prospect of recovering the diamond via Rizzo's workplace. But before he can try to break in, he is sent out under a different name. A museum exhibit appears to have been stolen from a shipment crate. However, they discover at the scene that the robbers have left the famed museum untouched. The FBI arrives as well, and Miles clashes with an FBI agent Gray over who has jurisdiction over the murder. After some time, the LAPD is ordered to leave the crime scene, and Miles is forced to comply, but not before giving the pompous FBI agents a lecture. He deduces on the way back, using his vast knowledge and expertise, that the FBI was looking for drugs rather than treasure. He notes that criminals frequently sneak drugs into the United States as cargo, and then steal them before they pass through customs. His team then searches for bonded vehicles. These are the only vehicles that are permitted to enter bonded warehouses. They quickly identify a lone truck going through the congested streets. Carlson, having learned from him, speeds through the city and zeroes in on the truck. The FBI radios them to reverse, but Miles and his team recognize the smugglers, and apprehend the truckload of heroin at a traffic check. Later that day, Miles enters the evidence room, claiming to be looking into the seized medications. He is overjoyed when he successfully retrieves the diamond. Rizzo suddenly appears and startles Miles, leading him to drop the diamond into the bag of heroin. Rizzo then demonstrates that the FBI is testing the heroin. The heroin belongs to a known drug kingpin named Jean Lafleur, who operates out of Mexico. 
a terrified Miles advises that the FBI and his police unit use the heroin as bait, in a sting operation to apprehend La Fleur, no longer willing to give up the diamond. He further states that he will personally deliver the merchandise to the drug boss. The FBI likes his idea, and the operation is now approved. Before leaving, Miles secretly releases his friend Tully from his protection. He quickly retrieves the diamond after arriving at his location. But before he can flee, Tully and Deacon both indicate up. The latter takes the diamond from Miles at gunpoint, but La Fleur soon appears. Chaos ensues, and Deacon seizes the opportunity to flee with the diamond in an armored vehicle. Miles chases after the truck, and jumps on when it returns. The cops and the FBI will soon be following Deacon as he reaches the Mexican border. Detective Woodcastle tries to persuade Deacon to stop the vehicle, but it eventually crashes nearby. Miles tries to swing his way to the front of the truck, with nothing else working, but Deacon crosses into Mexico. On his journey, he drives through the barricaded area set up by both Mexican and American officials. Miles falls from the truck as a result of the extended shock, and watches as Deacon's van fades from view. The police and FBI are obliged to call a halt to their border pursuit, because they have no jurisdiction over Mexico. Miles doesn't want to give up, so he borrows a patrol car and pursues Deacon. He eventually catches up to Deacon, and crashes his truck. They both emerge from their vehicles a few seconds later, and hold each other at gunpoint. When Miles notices the Mexican police approaching, he offers him a deal, Deacon must hand over the diamond, in exchange for Miles taking him back to the US, and providing him with a cut after selling the diamond. However, as soon as Deacon agrees, Miles double-crosses him by handcuffing him to the wrecked truck for the Federales, and walking back to the US border. Deacon attracts a gun to fire at him, but Miles turns and shoots him down, avenging Eddie's death. Following that, he enters the United States, where the FBI and police both demand explanations. This time, Miles informs them that he is an undercover Mexican cop, and must file a new report with his fellow Federales. Carlson and Hardcastle stop him a few inches across the border, indicating that they know who he is in fact. However, they do not arrest him, since they are grateful for all of his help. Furthermore, they promise that the FBI will not be able to approach him, because he is only a few inches across the border. Miles departs for Mexico with the diamond as they say a tearful goodbye. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.